traveled up into the, the North Fork Gorge there, and we can pull apart on both sides of, of the uh, river valley where the bottom of the three was, and it's been eroded through today. So we only get a little bit, and there's always basalt gravel, maybe about 40 or 50 feet of basalt gravel on the top of it. And we can see those relationships up to the very top of the canyon right there. We're hypothesizing, just from the mapping that we're doing, it, that uh, the LaRue Creek and, and Rogers Mesa fan ran several times at several places. And in doing it, it actually filled up that part of the canyon to about 50 feet high. And it's kind of intriguing because if there was water coming down the North Fork from the glaciers at that time, that would have formed a big lake going up the valley right there. And, mm -hmm. and so we've named something that isn't there anymore. We call it Lake Hotchkiss. <laughs> and um, it would have been a heck of a state park back at that yeah. time. But, uh, but we had a whole canyon that was just blocked. And it would be like a dam that somebody would build today. And that dam probably would have been there until the water got high enough to wear through it. And then we would have had another flood coming down this way. So. These gravels probably partially came down because of a debris flow, and maybe out at the fan, they were spread out by both the Gunnison breaking through its dam and the North Fork breaking down its dam here. And just another example of why this Ice Ages would have been so exciting, because we've got all these things going on. Did you have your museum all Oh, that? hold on just a second. The North Fork was separate from the Gunnison. So if this is our sixth terrace up on the top here, it's all Gunnison. We go into the five terrace, the four terrace, the three terrace, the two terrace down there. If we were to go down about two miles or so, they're all this mixed Gunnison and North Fork gravel. So sometime between this six and the five, which is the next one up from us, something happened. And it's something, that, oh, it's got such a great name. We call it stream piracy. And what happened is some little part of the Gunnison River, when it was at five level, which is, I don't know, the, the top of this uh, little bread loaf hill right out this way, that's about the five level. Before that happened, some little at this level is even though we've got a North Fork gravel right here and a Gunnison gravel across the way, pretty shortly when we go downstream, they're all mixed together. The other thing that happens here is the Gunnison step down this way down the hill, the North Fork step down this way into it. At some point, these rivers have no place to go because they've all come down to the bottom. And once the North Fork got pirated away right up here, then all of a sudden, from this point on down, we had two big rivers draining the glaciers instead of one. 
And that's the point that we see this lower Gunnison Gorge dug in. When we're at the sixth level, up on the top of that hill, if you look at it, it's just out in the adobes. So, you know, that, that stream just wasn't really in a gorge at all at that time. It was just an adobe stream. But once we get into the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, from those points on, the river is always trapped right here. And it's just going deeper and deeper and deeper. The whole pattern of it isn't going right along the front of the Dakota. It's kind of curving around and it's it's probably following the stream as it looked when it was in the adobes and it could just kind of push its way around and make it shape like it likes to and, and rivers when they're in shales like that they like to make these huge swooping curves and you know they aren't very straight. Um, in this bedrock like this we're probably looking at an inherited path on the river and we've got these terraces just kind of remnants of them up on the side but got cut and it's because we've got both rivers coming in and now they're carrying twice as much water and twice as much cutting as we had before. And in the future you think about where this river's gonna go, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller into the bottom. Let's say that uh, some big volcano in Alaska it goes off and fills the sky up with you know all this volcanic stuff and and global warming starts and, and we're all of a sudden back into to volcanic winter again and we start growing, growing glaciers. If those glaciers melt and we had a big runoff going through here, they'd probably eat away at the sides of the valley here and, and make it a little bit wider. But this valley at this point has nowhere to go but down. And it's a really different geology situation than what we had in the past where the rivers could kind of pick their own course. So was at that time, um, two million years ago, was this uh, much lower towards sea level? Um, no, it was all pretty high at that okay. time during the glacial periods. Of course, we had to be high enough for the glaciers to And so that last two million years, Colorado hasn't probably changed much in its altitude. Now, it's changed a lot since the adobes were made. It was at sea level or below sea level at that time, but we've had at least 80 million years to make that adjustment. Certain things have happened. Right. So, so you had a question. Now, with all that fills up the sediment, and the same thing with Bayonia Dam, wouldn't you have some kind of evidence of something like that at the inlet part? 